Welcome everybody, my name is Corey McAvoy and this is my video series on Mobic State Tree. During this video series, at first I'm going to do an overview about what Mobic State Tree is and why you might want to use it. And then I'm going to go into a series of tutorials that demonstrate how to build an application with Mobic State Tree. In my tutorial, I'll kind of dive a little bit deeper into each concept. So if you're really interested in learning a lot about Mobic State Tree, I would recommend uh, going through this entire video tutorial series and then really dive into the docs and build your own application. I think that's the best way to learn. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the presentation. So if you're not already aware, Mobic State Tree is a state management solution uh, for React and other, other JavaScript frameworks. State management solutions are really simple. It's just a centralized place where you can store data about your application. So rather than passing components down to children and back up to parents, instead you just have a centralized place where you can just store the data and access it from any component that you want. Um, with most state management solutions, there are great ancillary benefits such as transaction support, normalization, and memoization. Um, in Mobic State Tree, we'll get into this in a little bit, but it does include those benefits. Now, the industry standard is Redux, um, especially for, for React. It is very complex and includes a lot of boilerplate. However, it is good for a lot of reasons. The primary reason is that it is proven to work in production at scale. Um, this is highly critical if you're making an early uh, stage design decision on what uh, your technology architecture is going to be with your app. Twitter, for instance, uh, and Grubhub use Redux in production. So it's proven to work at the enterprise level at scale. It also has a very large community attached. So if you run into some sort of issue or have some sort of question, there's a high percentage chance that you'll, you can get that answer with Stack Overflow or Reddit or any of those um, media outlets. It's also very performant, and that's been proven over time. And Redux is also immutable, which creates great support for transaction-related applications. Um, and immutability also optimizes React performance through um, the minimization of re-rendering. Um, the bad, obviously, I kind of mentioned this before, but Redux is very complex, and it's also very dependent on middleware. For instance, there's no asynchronous actions that are just built into Redux. You have to go and use Redux Sagas, Redux Thonk, which are, which are middleware offerings with Redux. There's also the ugly part of Redux, and this is a common complaint from most of the users, is that Redux includes a lot of boilerplate. Um, so to set up your Redux store, there's a lot of stuff you have to do. You have to create action creators, you have to create reducers, um, if you're using TypeScript, which I recommend, you also have to set up types for your actions um, and your entities. You also have to do selectors for pulling data out of the store. So it's a lot of boilerplate and it, it takes a long time to set up and a long time to iterate because of all this boilerplate. Now all this boilerplate and complexity create a motivation for a new state management library called MobX. Now, MobX is very, very different from Redux. Uh, MobX is built on observable technology. Um, and as a result, it has very little boilerplate. And it is still highly performant. Um, so if you look here on the right, here's just some snippets of what MobX kind of looks like. Um, you've got observables that are just straight mutable. You can easily edit them. Um, and they're really easy to just stick in your app. Um, some of the downsides of MobX is that it is unopinionated, so that means that you can sort of build it however you want, uh, but most often it leads teams to just roll their own state management solution, but using MobX is sort of like an engine to sort of like power the, um, the observables and like the, the alterations on those observables. It's also mutable, which is kind of good and bad. It's bad because you lose that transaction support that you would get from um, you know, most requirements. Um, it also, it's a little bit less um, optimized on React. So with the immutable structure, you get the benefit of minimizing the amount of re-renders that you need to do um, in a React application. Um, so those are some of the downsides on, uh, on MobX. 
Um, some of those downsides with the, the mutability and the um, unopinionated structure uh, created motivation for MobX state tree, which is simply an opinionated and transactional state management solution that is built on top of MobX. Um, and so MobX state tree, or otherwise known as MST, is ready to use right out of the box. Um, so there's there's very little setup. You don't have to you know create your own um, state management structure. Everything it's a batteries included type of product. It also has great TypeScript support, which is it's huge for the developer experience. Um, it's also very opinionated. There's a way that you're supposed to use MobX state tree, and so um, following that structure is it's just really easy for the developer to understand. And it's just really easy to get started with. Um, it also has immutability support um, through a thing called snapshots. Um, snapshots I'll kind of get into in a little bit, but you can think about it as just like um, a state and time of your um, state management uh, structure. Um, each time you update your state management store, a new snapshot is created. Um, so that, that essentially creates the immutable part of MobX state tree. Uh, now, understanding MobX state tree is simple. You've got really six main pieces of MobX state tree, um, which are trees, nodes, leaves, actions, views, and snapshots. If you understand these six pieces of MobX state tree, you'll understand about 90% of um, MobX state tree in general. Uh, just kind of going through these. So um, trees, nodes, and leaves. If you focus your attention here um, at, in this little rounded square, um, this group of nodes and leaves, this is considered a tree. Um, and then each node will contain several leaves. So um, trees contain a, a group of nodes and nodes contain um, either leaves or pointers to other nodes. Um, so th this is essentially trees, nodes, and leaves. Now a snapshot is a point in time of your tree. So let's say your, your tree is initially created. That will be your first snapshot. And if you go in and edit a piece of your tree, let's say for instance le this leaf right here, a new snapshot of your tree is created. Um, so you see down here at the bottom right, I've got this leaf two, which is uh, a different version of our previous um, snapshot. So these snapshots essentially create the immutable representation of our tree, um, which is which is really handy. Um, actions and views. Anytime you want to update your tree, you'll do it through an action. Um, so you'll have functions and asynchronous functions within these actions that allow you to um, update different components um, such as your leaves or your nodes, which is really handy. Now views, these are like computed values um, with, within your tree. Um, so let's say you've got um, like several nodes of employees and maybe you want to find out how many employees are in your tree you can create a computed view called number of employees and it simply looks at the number of employee nodes that you have and it will just return the value. Um, so it's not an explicit value in your tree, but it's a computed value. In a MobX state tree, this is really beneficial because um, Mo uh, MobX state tree has memoization built in um, for most of the views. As long as the view doesn't have a parameter, um, it, it'll be automatically memoized by MobX state tree, which is really, really handy and it, it kind of saves on the performance optimization. Um, so if you understand those six items, you're pretty solid with MobX state tree. There's also two other concepts that um, you know are not as important but are still you know somewhat important is asynchronous side effect support. So um, essentially, if you have an action, you can wrap it with a function called flow that allow you to do some sort of asynchronous action, such as update your server with um, certain changes that occur on your tree. There's also support for lifecycle methods. If you're familiar with React, you've got the component, will, uh, component did mount and other um, component lifecycle methods. 
Well, your um, tree has, has its own lifecycle method support, such as on snapshot. Anytime a snapshot is updated, you can do a set of operations, and that's your lifecycle method support, which is really handy. Now, um, the Mobex state tree integration with React is really easy to do if you use TypeScript decorators. Now, um, decorators are also supported in you know, vanilla JavaScript with um, ES6 support, but if you're using Create React app, you would have to eject out to get that support. If you use TypeScript, you don't have to eject out of Create React app, and you can just use decorators built in. Now, the way this really hooks into your React app, um, there's several ways you can do it, but the way that I recommend is when your app starts up, before you actually run your, before you actually do your first render of your application, you should first create the root tree instance. And then after that, in your, your basically the root level of your app, wrap your app with a provider component. And in that provider component, which comes from MobX state tree, you can input your uh, root tree as a property. Um, and then if you do that, Anywhere in your app, you're able to access the root tree using decorators. And that's what I have over here on the right, this little snippet. Um, I use a decorator with this is a decorator right here with this at and then you know some sort of uh, word. Um, you do this before your um, React class. All you do is you do um, inject and then whatever the name of your tree is. And if you do this, you'll be able to access your tree through the class component props. So if you see down here in this component did mount method, I'm actually accessing our root tree right here using this dot props dot root tree and then dot you know whatever uh, function or value that you want to reference. Um, if you want to listen to any sort of um, updates to your uh, to your Mobex state tree you would need to um, use this observer decorator as well on your class. And if you have that, um, your component will essentially listen for any changes that occur. Um, it, it's also very important to um, do the ejects first before your observers. Um, if you don't, you, you'll essentially run into issues. I also do want to note that you don't have to use decorators. Instead, you can use higher order functions, or sorry, um, higher order components, kind of like what you do with Redux. Um, however, I, I just find it much cleaner to just use decorators rather than you know composing several, um, several higher order components together, which is kind of ugly in my opinion. Um, so that's, that's how you inject it into React. I think this is really simple uh, relative to other strategies. Now, an important note, if you're making a design decision on whether you should be using MobX state tree or not, um, there is one important gotcha that you really need to understand in order to make this decision. Um, there's an issue called issue 440 on MobX state tree um, where there is a known performance problem in which um, you have a tree with a large number of nodes, um, especially like once you hit 2000. So for a practical example, imagine a to-do list with you know, 5,000 to-dos, uh, and they're all stored on your client state. Um, anytime you go to um, create a new snapshot, um, there is a bit of a performance issue, and it actually locks up the UI. Um, this is unfortunately a big issue, uh, but there are workarounds for it. Uh, the most popular solution that I've seen is to uh, move the large volume of nodes into a thing called volatile state. Um, this volatile state is essentially excluded from snapshots. So if you do this, your performance will dramatically increase, um, but you'll lose the benefit of um, Mobex state tree snapshots. Uh, so your app may not be fully immutable um, because the stuff in the volatile state will not you know, be involved in those snapshots, um, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and, and, and this is just applicable at the time of this recording. It, they, it, this could end up being fixed in the future. Uh, I know that they're currently looking for maintainers. Um, so this very well could be a non-issue in the future. 
Okay, so that's that's pretty much a high level overview of um, Mobix State Tree and how you hook it up to React. Um, next, I'm going to go through a tutorial where we'll actually build an application um, using Mobix State Tree. Um, this application is going to be rather simple. It's going to basically be an employer, an employee type of app where you can um, you can add or remove employees. And the um, the employer will have uh, you know simple properties such as like name and location, um, but I I think we have enough in this app to really um, give you a sense of what Mobex State Tree is and how you can use it in every little way. Um, throughout each step in this tutorial, I may dive a little bit deeper into Mobex State Tree um, concepts as I kind of go through, um, just to give you a, a deeper understanding of Mobex State Tree. Um, so I'll go ahead and end the video video now, and um, in the next video I'll go ahead and start um, creating the app. See you then.